Hello. Right, today I'm at um, St George's Church, Yoskapu, and there's probably about eight of those churches with that name. But this particular one is by the Shrine Caves, which we'll be visiting in a minute. Uh, first, though, I'm just going to go and ch check out the church itself. I'm not going into the church because it's actually fairly regularly used by the faithful and I don't feel it's right to go in and film them doing their prayers really. It's only a very small little chapel anyway so. There are lots of cats up here as well. It seems to be fairly commonplace for these churches to have those. I wonder if the Paphos cat lady covers this area. We'll go and see them first actually. Got a whole camp. Oh, someone's feeding them. There you go. Wonderful objector. What's the moggies? I don't want to frighten them when they're being fed, so... <laughs> I'll back off. We'll go and see the church now. Oh, little doggies in the car there. Careful how I walk. Yes, uh, this is part of the same ridge of cliffs that I recently wrote some articles about in Paphos, just further along towards the Oscarpu. And uh, was a now that's a. I'm presuming we pan down a bit. That isn't normally flooded because there is a shrine down there. But the recent storms and rains. I'll pop my head in there, but the lighting will be atrocious, and this isn't set up for nighttime viewing. So, on me. Yes, uh, there's more, there's another chamber to the side there. Okay. There's another little that shrine or water feature. And if you look up there you can see now I read somewhere that it, and it might even be here But there's a cave here that goes all the way into Euroscopu uh, beneath the main centre of Euroscopu. I'm not going in there because there might be, as I said, people in there praying. I respect their right to have peace and solitude in such instances. But yes, uh, it goes all the way over to the centre of Euroscopu, but apparently the air is not good. And uh, so it's all blocked off. Right, what I'm going to do now is, uh, well, I'll film the first bit, then I'm going to walk up to the other end of the Shrine Caves and walk, film the rest of it walking back. That way the sun won't be forever in our eyes. There's another shrine there. But basically what it is, as you can see if you look up here is the cliffs here are just full of caves and 
alcoves, I guess, which have in turn been turned into little shrines. And we'll see that properly when we come back. Typically the sun's going behind a cloud now. So I will just do a little bit up here. But then we'll start from the other end. Or continue from the other end rather. Yeah, it looks like it's been cleaned out recently. Uh, while I'm at this end though, I will show you this sign because there was an art exhibition here a couple of years ago. There'll probably be remnants of it still around. But we'll have a look here first of all, as the sun's not out. You might be able to see that. Right, Eco Art 2019, Public Nature, Private Culture. Site specific contemporary artworks by several, seven uh, visual artists. You had Ephemeral Culture, and I think that was one made out of cat uh, food, believe it or not. The second one, Tama and the Rose, Miriam McConnell. Third one, Memory Game. Fourth one, Tablets. Fifth one, Mosaic Graphic. Let's get this in the picture. Sixth one, Aphrodite's Pigeon. <laughs> okay. Seventh one, The Wish Harder. And eighth one is just Winus, the Fo oh, St. George and the Dragon. Okay, we'll go as far, we'll probably start filming again at St. George and walk backwards. Right, I've reached the end of the trail now, and of course it's shady. Uh, you can continue walking along this way, and it, it, it is kind of circular in that there are two routes. Uh, an upper route, which will then take you onto a road, and then you can come back down the lower route. So, uh, I'm not going to do it on this film because it's mainly just countryside. There is uh, an old ruin along the way that's quite uh, good fun to explore if you like that sort of thing. So if you do want to go and see that, take the high road here and then you can just come back the way you came if you want to. Or you can go around. And cause, yes, there are some interesting rocks on the way back the low way as well. So anyway, I'll leave that up to you. Here though, we're at, I guess you could if you're being very generous, call it an amphitheatre. It's basically just a row of seats. And we're heading back this way now. In the distance, you can't see it, but there is the church. And we'll be more interested in what's below the cliffs here. Now, this exhibit here, is, I think it's St. George and the Dragon, the sign appears to have gone. Because the, the, the exhibition itself was in 2019. So, oh, the problem with walking this way is that you've got a shadow in the picture. Go down this on the lower path for a little bit. Get my shadow out of the way. Because, well, you can see the next exhibit ahead of us, and it's uh, basically a skeletal tree with lots of hoops on it. All this land here to our left and beyond, according to numerous articles and huge signposts, will one day be developed into a business park, education centre and retail area. That will probably dwarf quite a lot of pathos, I'd imagine, if it's ever built. But hopefully this little area will still survive because it's a beautiful place to walk and if you've got half an hour or even an hour depending on how quickly you walk and how much you like to appreciate 
compare the other art exhibits then it's a good place to go and in the summertime it's fairly well shaded as well so the wind's picking up so my voice might be getting a bit quiet but there you have the next exhibit let's get the picture oh sorry I'm getting cramped in my arm because I've carried this camera a lot more than the film you've seen would have you believe might be a little edit there I'm getting onto the upper path now so I can see the next exhibit is called Aphrodite's Pigeon I seem to remember we get there we're going past some more caves not all the caves have votive offerings in them but, uh, they're very fascinating though. here we come to Aphrodite's Pigeon now looking at that the first the only question is where's the pigeon? Actually, if you have a question, it's why is there a box in that tree? Well, if you can see that on film, but there's a big blue box in that tree. Might we'll get back to here, though. Right. The team of students of the Department of Architecture, Neapolis University, Paphos, created an installation called Aphrodite's Pigeon as a contemporary image of Aphrodite thus referring explicitly to the myth of the goddess, her physical appearance, I'm oh, sorry, myth of the goddess. Her physical appearance is symbolized in the volumes of metal frames. Only her bird has biomorphic form. Sorry about that, but the sign's very faded and I couldn't see the full stop. So, where is the pigeon? Turn the camera, and there you have it. Ta-da! One pigeon. Moving on. This next one, it's not an exhibit this, it's just a tunnel with a mysterious grate in it. There will be a link to various articles that I've written about these Shrine Caves. Uh, if you want more information and more pictures of the insides of them, then look at the articles on there. Right, this next one is quite interesting. The exhibit is in there, we'll have a look at it in a minute, but let's read the inscription first. Here we go, see if you can pick that up anyway. Suzanne Vargas creates modern votive tablets. Is based on the interaction with the visitors as well as the believers. Their offerings can be very personal and private, as well as very public. Her seven wax tablets in one of the caves have this private and publicness about them. While we don't know who has written the message, it is there for everyone to see. We go in. Time for the lens to get used to the light. You see seven tablets, and you can still come in and write on the wax if you want. It still works. I've already tested it. I didn't write anything. I just drew a line. Verifying any 
نفر بازی می رفت بگیم And what I'll also do is include pictures in this film of uh, what the exhibits looked like when they were, the show was running in 2019. This one just looks like a cave style, if you read the inscription. The site-specific insulation memory game is formed by fragmented casts, more like reliefs of dolls' houses, but at the same time formed as modern ruins. It exists visually as a miniature of the general perspective of the St George's area as observed from a distance, offering a landscape where the viewer can create his or her own story. Memory game relates to the artist's childhood memories as she grew up in the Oscapu and visited the area creating a space between reality, fragility and fiction. I realised at the start that, that I was filming the whole and reading the sign, so you wouldn't necessarily have been getting my voice, which is why I had to pan back. Right, we're going in now. And you can just pick it up in the life. Well, hopefully you can anyway. Or you find again. Lots of loads of offerings in here. Not many bits of sculpture anymore. Hardly surprising because the uh, exhibition was a couple of years ago now. But what's left is still nice enough. Cypriots certainly are a religious culture. Give it up trying to hide in the shadow now, as you can probably gather. There's obviously some sort of little building there. Now this one, I'll definitely have to put a picture up of because it was very nice, but it's pretty. It's gone now. But there's the description. Miriam McConnell's large-scale cave insulation sites. St George's area as a traditional place of worship. The artist examines the collective aspect of worship while highlighting the solitary path of individual grief and loss. And from memory, there were lots of like lace spiderweb motifs in there. They're really quite spectacular. She also did a piece on one of the street art square uh, exhibitions they did. I don't think it's, it's up at, at the moment because they're in the process of renovating that whole church area in Old Town. There's another Right, we're coming back to the church area now. Right, the final exhibit was probably the most bizarre one, one of the most bizarre exhibits you'd ever see. It was, it looked like a, an altar I suppose, or just a, a table, but it was made out of cat food. It's not there anymore, for fairly, fairly obvious reasons. I'll go and read the description first before we go and have a look in that cave. Michaelis Papa Michael's insulation deals with issues related to the long-term biocultural heritage and the change of landscapes. The ephemeral 
artwork refers to the site's spirituality and it is a votive offering to the current resident of Aeos Georgios, the cats, who we saw earlier on getting fed. But in addition to that, there was a big thing here which has long ago been eaten. I'll have a look in here. Well, I'll put up a picture of a map as well so you can see how to get here. As people always ask, even though there's a link normally. But uh, basically, if you come from the stadium roundabout and turn towards Cater Paphos, there'll be a set of traffic lights where you need to turn left. And then you take the first left from there. And then you take the first right. And then you're here. And you park up and you have a look around and you think god this is nice so there you have it saint george's shrine caves well worth a visit I guess.